All right, welcome back to Ideas at Work and Beyond. And, well, thank you very much, Mr. Brentis, for this great um, presentation and your platform about what you're going to do for Danbury. And I wish you the best. I wish you luck. What we're going to do now is we're going to discuss the future of the Democratic Party here in, in Danbury. And hopefully this will be very exciting. Um, I, I just would like to, to turn this over to um, Mrs. Tabasak because uh, she's a long-term... <laughs> because you know what, you know so much about the Democratic Party because you, because you, you um, have served this, con um, this, this city for many for years. For a whole generation. Right, so you know the ins and outs about the Democratic You're Party here. Old, you know, even though no. 39. No. 39. <laughs> no, no. So, so, what do you think? Um, what do you think the future is for the Democrats here in Adenberry? Can, can Ms. Alina really pull this off? Can she really beat the mayor? Will, 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 will the party really um, rally behind her and, and, and give her the seat well, this year? <laughs> the idea of any party uh, in Danbury uh, carrying the water for a candidate, I think, is a little passe. Um, Mark Boughton uses his coattails to elect Republicans. He's a uh, charismatic candidate, popular with voters kisses every baby that's born, eats rubber chicken seven nights a week, goes to every event. <laughs> the Democrats, for our part, um, kind of got fat and lazy because we had a great mayor, Gene Araquez, who really carried all the other candidates into office with him. And, you know, before that there was Jim Dyer, another good candidate, always carried people with him into office. And I think you see this back and forth, back and forth. You don't have strong party organizations. On the Democratic side, you don't have strong party organizations. On the Republican side, you have these um, Very star candid candidate oriented candidate as opposed to party oriented. Star oriented. candidates who will um, uh, lead the battle. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if Helena's the star candidate that's going to succeed. I mean, Lynn, Lynn brings up an excellent point, Ivan, because, you know, it, it talks about the figureheads that Paul and I talked about a couple of weeks ago on the program. When you get an icon figure that people are very comfortable with, Democrat or Republican, and you see them really sort of coming out as the central figure, generally their coattails carry. One of the things that Paul and I t uh, talked about recently was there's probably not one, in I don't see one incumbent first selectman or mayor in this whole greater Danbury area, Brookfield, Ridgefield, Bethel, Newtown, New Fairfield, et cetera, that's really in danger this year. I think this is the first year where you're going to see every incumbent in top office, barring a major screw up, get reelected in the fall. I mean, we've talked about that. No, I agree. I mean, mostly it's because we, we have generally competent leadership in the towns around. Um, to answer Ivan's original question, what does the, the future, at least immediate future, of the Danbury Democrat mm -hmm. Party look like? Uh, judging by tonight, it looks bleak, in my opinion. I mean, Ms. Abrantes may very well be a nice woman and uh, may, at least on paper, be qualified, but she didn't exactly share what I would call a coherent and uh, inspiring vision for the city. Um, so, you know, her performance obviously needs to improve um, if she is to be... Um, generally considered a viable candidate. And she's not a top-tier candidate either, as we've discussed, because you have six council members in the wards, and one at large who happened to outpoll the other uh, six Republican council members, and uh, a sitting town clerk, and, and, and two state reps from Danbury, none of whom, uh, all of whom have sat out the race, and also some big names well, from the past. But, but, well, okay, okay, can we talk this. about wait, November, wait, 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 last wait, wait, November? Wait, wait, I think wait, there was a Democratic sweep. Hello? Yes, okay, okay hold on Nancy for a second. Johnson? And, 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 wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on for a second, hold on. Wait, wait. Making six figures at Harvard. Lynn will most <laughs> certainly be re-elected re to the council with, with hopefully the, the current incumbent members who are good people. Um, the Democrats, they, they do have a future in Danbury. This year, uh, it just doesn't look promising for the mayor's I, okay, Yeah, I, I just say that Maddie. the power of the, the incumbency is, is really quite overwhelming, assuming he hasn't done something to tick off a large portion of, of the population. That happened once in Ridgefield um, with uh, Abe Morelli. Uh, he, uh, he wanted to do a bypass road right through a condo development, and, and uh, that was part of his downfall. But the power of the incumbency is really overwhelming. I, I was rather impressed with Helena. I thought, I thought you know, she presented herself very well. She's a, a, a good candidate. But I do think that the power of the incumbency is going to carry the day. Uh, you know, Mo Marty, you bring up an excellent point. I mean, you felt the wrath of the power of incumbency once. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I ran, I ran against uh, uh, Rudy Marconi in Ridgefield. I thought we put up a good campaign. 
and yet at the end of the day people appreciated having the discussion they appreciated having the debate I think the Democrat Party or the Republican Party has to put someone up so these issues can be out on the table that so the elected officials can be held accountable and uh, I think it's a good thing. And it is the incumbency because two years later you had more votes than Mr. Marconi when you ran for Board of Finance and he ran for first election. That's right so. if we could only <laughs> somehow <laughs> juggle the votes I did outdraw him very good of you to point that out. And that is and, and the other thing too is that like uh, for example the other thing too is when the gets voted out in the greater Danbury area, it's usually because they did took off a large majority of the voters, exactly. and they get thrown out by a big margin. They don't get thrown out in a squeaker or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, but, I, but I think Lynn is right. I, I think that the power, is it, is it too much to say that the power of, Demo, of the of Party. political parties is dead? Um, I, I love Will Rogers' quote. He said, I, I'm, I am a member of no organized political party. I'm a Democrat. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes, I don't know if it's because the political parties themselves are, are disorganized or the, just there's so much information that people can get through the internet. printed press, internet and what have you, that there really isn't a need for an old time political party. Our, and that people don't identify with We've got a call, so let's answer it. Uh, caller, you're yeah. on the air. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm actually a uh, new uh, listener here, and I've been uh, listening to your show for the past couple of weeks, and I just want to say that you've been doing a great job over there. But uh, I just wanted to share some facts with the show, because I think there's a lot of confusion going on with the ability of illegal immigrants to make uh, tax deduct I'm sorry, to file for tax income mm -hmm. um, in terms of their share. Uh, I, I think there was a question last time on the show as to how they're able to file for tax returns without a social security number. Yes. And that's called a tax ID number. Yeah. Sorry, Anyone go ahead. can apply for a tax ID number and file for, for their share of the income tax. Uh, and anyone can apply for that. And that's how illegal immigrants have been doing that, those who actually prefer to do it or those who have been willing to do so. Another comment, another fact, because a lot of people have been calling if, if about I, If I just immigrants pick up on that uh, caller, just one second. The uh, New York Times editorial said that nearly 8% of the federal income tax forms filed by Danbury residents contain no social security number. That's a New York Times editorial, so I think that goes to your point. They're going with a tax ID number. Say that. That's right, and it's, it's a very good point, sir, because that's exactly what's going to show with the show next. Sorry. The 8%, sorry. and that's exactly, uh, that actually represents that Danbury has the highest percentage of non-citizens who pay federal income taxes. That's, that's comparing to any other city in the state of Connecticut, okay? Uh, and another comment to uh, Frank. Uh, Frank uh, is a popular caller here in the show, I understand. He called a few minutes ago. And I don't know where he gets his facts or his statistics, but he seems to say that illegal immigrants are more likely than, I would say, residents uh, to commit crimes. Yeah. And if he pulls up the uh, statistical analysis of 2000 census data, it states that legal and illegal immigrants are far less likely than any native-born American to be incarcerated for crimes. Well, I'm but, sure Frank is watching right now, and he will uh, he'll probably will call in, I'm assuming, very in, in a few minutes to discuss <laughs> that, if you wish. But, um, right. Well, and my point of calling is just that not to condone illegal immigration, uh, not to say that ISIS stopped the raids, even though I disagree with the way ISIS is going about doing this. Uh, leaving, you know, uh, consequences such as leaving children behind with no support. Uh, but I just want to make sure that the debate is um, brought to the forefront on both sides and that the facts are not distorted uh, to bring forth a uh, view that is not representative of what the city really believes. So I just okay. want to share that with you, Yvonne. Uh, Yvonne, yes, sir. Bill, you went to Howard, great university. You went I, to Howard University, right, Yvonne? Howard, yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, listen, we should do a show about your background because I think there's a lot of viewers out there who want to know more about you and how you came to Danbury. Right. Oh, well, that's, that's true. Thank you. I All right, thank you. Have right. a good night. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right. Um, um, let me say this. Um, you, you, you said that her her presentation was bleak, right? Something like I, that? I just wasn't overly okay. impressed. Okay, can I tell you something? Sure. If President Bush can be elected for two terms, <laughs> anybody oh, can on. be elected on, to office in this country. We're not talking about anybody. That come on. And I know this Stop woman is, is, is 100% smarter and, and, and she than be. that she imbecile be. we have in the White House. Oh, so do, do not call the President of the United States an imbecile. Why do you think I should call him a dummy? Because I don't think you should call him any of that. I think he's the President of the United States, and I think he shows some respect. Let me just clarify this. I don't mean... This man... I don't want no one should respect this. Call you on the air. Listen, um, please don't do so that. So there again, I get my information pertaining to crime Hi, Frank. from um, from my courthouse friends there at GA3, and uh, the few a few uh, attend 
in an arraignment every uh, that is the the court hearing where everyone's arrested and they all show up for their uh <laughs> They're 60 to 80% to are illegal aliens. It's, hard, it's really hard um, to tell because the, the, their, their status is not talked about in the courthouse. It's Frank. But, um, it's I Frank. I also get my information from Crime USA, which is a publication put out by the FBI. Nonpartisan, right? Hey, Nonpartisan hey, by the FBI. It's called hey, Crime USA. All right, Frank. Yes, ma'am. What's up? You, listen, um, you know, the illegal immigrants topic can be discussed all you know all night right but we we want to discuss the the uh, future of the democratic party because if, yeah. if we want to talk about sure. illegal in immigrants let me talk about it then. Go ahead. Oh. you have like 59,000 state employees okay they belong to several different unions most of them their political action committees donate to the democrats i'll let our friend uh, next to the left, to the left of you talk about that they have a solid base here in connecticut so they have a strong future because they have a strong base. People living in public housing, people that are, have a government job, are likely to vote for a Democrat because the Democrats are going to give them the shirt off of our backs. And, okay. And, and All right, Frank. Frank, and Frank. Sorry, man. i got to talk to you later on, man. Frank, and, okay. what, Frank, what, and, Frank, and once you're on the public payroll, isn't it very difficult to get off? There's no, once, uh, exactly. There's no way. There's, it's difficult to get fired if you're protected by a, you know, if you're a state employee. Uh, I can go on and on and on. There's yeah, one that's employee that shot another state employee. He was not charged. I mean, I can go on and on. There's, they have privileges thanks to the Democrat Party. You can't get fired well, no matter hey, what kind of bad job you do. If you do a bad job as a state employee, hey, Frank, promote you. All right. Okay, Come Frank. On. Thanks. Look, whether you are Democrats or Republican, uh, you know, your job is going to be protected no matter what. You know, I mean, I mean, look at the uh, mayor. Okay, he's putting his people in um, certain positions, and, yeah. in, and they're going to be in there until someone gets rid of him. Well, you know, they and, die. Hold on, hold on. Well, they second. die. The Democrats are going to do the same thing. Okay, it's, it's just it's just who who is um, in power right now. Let, let me just give me one minute. Either. Go ahead. Let me clarify what I meant before when I when I spoke. Miss Abrantes is not a bad person. I don't mean to say that no, she is going to be destroyed in a, in a horrible landslide right. and that, that her reputation will be left in tatters. But her performance tonight was mediocre. And I don't see how anyone could say it was more but, than that. But she, listen, listen, when I you ask someone, that. Ivan, what they believe, they can't read it off a piece of paper. Oh, 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 listen, so listen, let's be listen, perfectly listen. honest just from a political perspective. Listen, this is a woman it, who came to this country at the age of five, mm -hmm. educated in this country, mm -hmm. okay? Who, and a, and a who, business owner, and I respect who that. has been very successful, both politically and business -wise. Well, she was thrown okay. out of office, now, so... You it, have Josh Bush. Success is... Ivan, Ivan, we're talking country. about the Democrat Party you know tonight, or we're talking about look, George Bush. Make up your let mind me tell you something, and okay? decide that, because I we're not here to talk the President of the United States tonight, uh, Ivan. Okay, you know what? Both I have you. supported the Republican Party in this town since I came here, okay? Ivan, you can't vote. How can you say you supported the Republican Party? You know, I can't vote, but guess what? got a television show. That might be even better. Yeah. I have given my services to this party, but that doesn't mean that I have to accept everything that the party nobody's, does. Nobody's okay? saying you did. Is what I'm trying to say is this. This is a democratic process, all right? The lady has an opportunity to be whatever she wants to be, okay? We have to give her a chance, okay? A chance to... To, to talk to us. And voters it's, decide. Right, it's all about yeah. issues, okay? No it's all about she right. doesn't. So all, all I'm saying is this. We, we, we talk about her, her performance. Guess what? We have an imbecile for eight years, okay? <laughs> no one has talked about his performance, right? Why don't you talk about his performance? You are a Republican. Let's talk about him. Why you see? Were, were we here to talk about yeah, the President yeah, of the United so States tonight? I'd be happy to talk about George Bush. I'd be happy to talk about the President of the United so, States. So let's talk about the Democratic Party in your town. What do you think they're going to do? Well, I think the Democratic Party are going to circle the wagons and have a wonderful parade for Rudy Marconi, mm -hmm. and they are going to praise his uh, ability to build schools and run the state or run the town and do a wonderful Bring in job. Business. Uh, not so much. They mm -hmm. won't emphasize that because businesses are leaving the town, not uh, coming in. So uh, that's what they will do, okay. and uh, and that's their plan. Okay. Call your name. You're hanging up on people again. Call your name. Hello? Hi, my name. Hi. Yes, go ahead. My name is Lindley. I'm calling from Texas. Hey. hey what's going on? Hey. Is uh, the woman there who was there last week? No, she went home. <laughs> She's here. <laughs> okay, 
Yeah, well, you know, um, as I went on throughout the week, I got more and more offended at the fact that you thought we should get rid of our steak. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> well, when people call into your show, it's like their Because it's the birthplace of home, George Bush. You don't really have the right to put someone oh, down because of their opinions or their views. And you certainly don't have the right to put down an entire state. Did you know that Texas actually came from the word Tejas, which is an Indian word that means friendly, so I'm going to try to be as friendly as possible. We are the only state of the United States that can fly our flag at the exact same height as the American flag. I'm pretty sure that wherever it is you're from, you can't do that. I don't and know do if the cold weather is making you cranky or what your, what your problem is. Okay, ma'am. Other people what's your question? Okay, ma'am. Well, thank you very much. And, um, and, uh, and uh, we don't got mess to, with we Texas. To, yeah, don't mess with Texas. We got that. But thank you, okay? Oh, and I keep on. watching the show online. Thank you very much. Well, they may fly the, their oh. flag as high as the United States flag, but they can also buy bullets and beer at a drive through So, you know, Texas is a different kind of a place. <laughs> How much time do we have left? I mean, we, you know, we, we need to go look. on. There's too much to discover. We've got to unpack this, George Bush <laughs> history. There's, no. Texas is a country. Well, let me, let me tell you something about Marty Heiser's town of Ridgefield over there. They've got <laughs> Paul Tribby refers to Brookfield as the one-party town, reddest of the red. Well, let me tell you something. Ridgefield has a higher percentage of registered Republicans than Brookfield and has a lower percentage of registered Democrats than Brookfield, yet they're Democrats win landslides. I can't figure it out. It can never happen in my town. It's true. Well, it's it about just, Brookfield. No, it just says it. I, I, I think, I think, I think today's, okay. uh, I think uh, today's voter, especially in this region it's in general, vote for the individual and not for uh, the party. It's okay, it's, it's time local. to go and I would I like to say, bad. it's time to go. I would like to apologize for the technical difficulties and um, I, I would like to thank um, Joe and, 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 and everybody who's helping us out today. Um, David Serrero is not here and, and I know he was sick last week so I wish him well. Goodbye. Tune in next week because we're going to start talking about um, the mayor's um, Mark Bowden some policies here in a Danbury. In the budget. So, the budget. You know, in, in the budget. Yeah, so good I, look, our, anyway, we are leaving. And uh, as I can say, if George Bush can be president for eight years, um, um, you know, Alina, country, uh, uh, Alina has a chance because she's a very smart woman. And, um, you know, let's try to get this imbecile out of power, please. George Bush. George Bush. Come on okay. In. <laughs> Spend some time. The clouds broke and the sun's begun to shine. Kick off your shoes Winter's gone, it's time to chase away them blue, blue, blue Yeah